problem. Is there a greatest common factor of these three terms? So let's divide the three out first. We want to take that GCF that we factored out and go put it in the answer space right now so we don't have to think about it again. And then we're going to start using that box to unpuzzle this. We start by putting the squared term here and the constant here. We know that what's missing is our diagonal here and that that is going to equal the center term. So let's put that down in the base of our X puzzle. What are we going to put in the multiplied part of our X puzzle? We're going to multiply these terms and we'll get negative 15 X squared. There are not a lot of things we can multiply to get 15, are there? It has four sets, four factors, one and 15, three and five. What do you think is gonna get us added to the negative two X? Negative five X and positive three X. I'm going to put those into my box. No, it's a great question. Um, if you couldn't hear V's question, she asked, does it matter where I put these? And it doesn't. One has to go in one and one has to go in the other. And it really doesn't matter where. Once you place them, though, what goes outside the square is important. But we could, I could have set them up this way, and you guys could have put the negative 5x here and the positive 3x here. We would still end up at the end with the right answer. So when I look at this first, what I'm looking for are things I see in common. I see a negative 5 down here going across, don't you? So I'm going to put a negative 5 here. What do we see going across the top? Yeah, we're looking for the greatest common factor of both of those, aren't we? And it's 3x. What do I need to put across the top to make these multiply down and get what I want? I'm going to put an x here with an invisible 1 in front of it. Does x times 3x get me 3x squared? Does x times negative 5 get me negative 5x? What's missing here? Yeah. 1 times 3x gets me 3x. 1 times negative 5 gets me negative 5. That means my answer is 3x minus 5 and x plus 1. And what I mean by when I answered these question earlier by this is the part that's important. These two are together, so they have to be together in the answer. And these two are together, so they have to be together in the answer. Does that make sense, y'all? And it really, it doesn't matter if, if we had set this up opposite, these two would have been down the side and these two would have been across the top, but they still would have been together. I saw a hand for a question. Was that Myra? Go ahead. Yes. And let's just prove it. You guys don't need to write this, but I'm going to come over here and make an X box or a, a box. We have the three X squared, negative five. Those have to be where they are. Originally, we put the 3x up here, but what if I put the negative 5x? 
what we would put outside would change on where it is, but by the end, it's still going to be the same. The 3x would go here, right? Negative 5. X, 1. My answer would still be that factored out 3. Sorry, I didn't realize I'd gone off the screen there. Um, and then 3x minus 5 and x plus 1. It's still the same. The box just looks different. Okay, let's try another one together. Great questions. <clears throat> First question, is there a GCF? There's no GCF. That means at the end there will be no number in front of the parentheses. We'll just have two parentheses multiplied together. What are we going to put in this box here? 2x squared. What's going to go down here? Let's start filling in our x puzzle. Where did I get the negative 18x squared? The top gets the multiplied diagonal that we have. The bottom gets that center term. By the way, in your notebooks, open up the very first thing we glued in. Y'all see this? First thing is all these things with cubes and squares. Look at the next set. This would be the kind of thing you might want to keep open when working on this problem. Your brains are doing a whole bunch of things. Remember yesterday we talked about all the things we were doing to solve yesterday's problems? Today we're adding a step to every single one of those things. So I know you all know the factors of 18, but there is nothing wrong with opening this up and being like, oh, duh, it's going to be this. Because you can look at them and start to see where that difference or the addition is. What are our factors of 18? Three and six, two and nine, one and 18. What's going to work for this one? Yeah, one of these is going to be 3x, and the other is going to be 6x. One of them is going to be negative. Which is the negative? Which is the positive? 6 is positive, and 3 is. Fill them in over here. Now I'm looking for common factors for the things in the box. <clears throat> I see a 2x shared between these. And if I put an x here, do I get 2x squared times x gets me this box? What would I need to put over here above this to make this negative 3x then? Negative 3. And if I have negative 3 here and negative 9, what's going to go over here to make this negative 9? And then does that three work for this box? Three times two is six, and we have one X, so it works. Again, our answer is what is on the outside. These two together and these two together are our parentheses. And honestly, I don't find the need to check these as often if you're doing this check as you go, right? If you look at this and you're like, okay, negative three, I probably want a positive three, and you put it over here and you don't check this sex x, that's where the mistakes are going to happen. 
But if you look at this and go, okay, I know that these two equal this, do these two also now equal this? You're checking as you go. You guys ready to try one on your own or do you want to do this one together? Thumbs up if you want it together. Thumbs down if you want to do it on your own. Basically, you're giving me thumbs up, keep talking or stop talking. Perfect, I will stop talking then. And um, I will leave a key up underneath the projector or you can come and look at mine. We will want to talk about the last problem.